This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Ducati Supersport, the 950S Ducati Supersport to be exact. I've had this bike on loan for the last week from Ducati UK to try it out. I mean, it's a bike I've not tried before, apart from on track, and I thought it was only okay on track. This is really a street bike. This is Ducati's answer to a comfortable street sporty bike you know not a full-on uh, track machine like the Panagales but something geared up to be a bit more comfort for the road basically but is it any good join me for a spin and I'll let you know Chopsy roll the intro her up. Let's hit it. So if you're not aware, the Supersport 950 is a 937cc V-twin, or L-twin, as Ducati like to call it, because the, the cylinders are more opposed than a V, they're more like an L. Uh, it's the same engine which is used in the Hypermotard 950, the new Ducati Monster, so it's a different lump than what's in the Panagali V2. It's not the same lump as what's in that. This is a, a lower powered machine. This is 110 brake horsepower and a 93 newton meters of torque. So this bike is actually a road bike first and foremost. You know, this is Ducati's answer. If you want something sporty for the road, you know, you don't, not really interested in compromising road comfort by riding a, a track bike on the road, which is what the, the V2, the, the V4 Panigale is, this is their answer for something a bit more sporty, sports bike like, but for the streets, which makes a hell of a lot of sense. The best thing I can compare this to is the Aprilia RS660. You know, it's very similar to that bike, similar power levels, the RS660 being 100 brake horsepower, this is 110, but it's that same similar riding position, a sports bike, but with clip-ons above the yokes. So, you know, it's a high-rise bars, a similar sort of seat, a leg position to a, to a sports bike, maybe a little bit more comfortable. You don't have to have that, I'm pulling my pegs, by pulling my feet right up on the pegs now. You haven't got that feeling when you get on it, but it's still a moderately high foot peg position, but it's just a lot more comfortable for the street. This is the S model, which is the higher end version. So this is the one, this comes with Olin suspension and you know, all of those little extras that the S have. I think actually it's just the Olins on, on this model, I could be wrong. But this has got the Olins and what they've done, and what I, what I really like about this bike is because it's a street bike, they've set the Olins for a street bike ride, it's very comfortable. Normally with the Olin suspension, it's a bit rock hard for the street to be honest and you can dial out preload on it but it's always a little bit hard on this because it's a street bike they're fully specced in street comfort mode if you like and the suspension on this is wonderful i think it's probably the best suspended sort of road bike i've ever ridden it's so compliant that this is this is why this is when i realized how good this gold stuff is really because this suspension is so compliant over the bumps but it's also great when you push on and I think the S model with this Olin's on it makes for a wonderful ride this has got Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tyres on it's a sort of a road tyre but with a sporty feel to it and this thing is just lovely to throw around the little country lanes dollops of torque at the bottom and it will carry on and sing to its 10,000 rpm rev limit it's uh, it's a bit of a peach the bike also comes with a full IMU and for this year they've got the digital dash the same TFT the smaller TFT it's the same one which was on the XD Apple I rode a few weeks ago, same one which is on the Hypermotard, the smaller version, same one as on the V2 Panigale, it's the smaller version of the Ducati 
uh, TFTs and I really like the layout on these. I like the fact that they're just simple to read. You've got just an analog clock. And because this is a road bike, this one also has a fuel gauge. Fantastic, yet again, another Ducati with the blooming fuel gauge. So you've got an IMU, but what that means is what they've done, another fantastic thing, is they've isolated the wheelie control from the traction control. So this bike has got separate lift control. Separate lift control which is great, I love that. These modern electronics, when they start separating anti-wheelie and traction, is great. And also, with all of the electronic modes, you've got a sport, you've got a rain, you've got like three different modes. All of them, you can fully customise them. So you can have as much traction as you want in each of those modes, as much wheelie control as you want in each of those modes. So, you know, again, top spec electronics on this. The only slight downside and the slight fly in the ointment it's well it's to do with the specs really if you just look at the spec list of this bike you may be put off because it's a little bit heavy this bike it weighs 183 kilos dry and it's got a wet weight of 210 kilos so when you compare this to the RS660 the RS660 weighs 184 kilos wet <laughs> so this is you know this is considerably heavier than the RS660. It may have another 10 brake horsepower over the RS660, but I actually think the RS660 is faster in a straight line because it's lighter and it's only 10 brake horsepower less. So overall, I think it's actually faster. This 950 engine, good as it is, it is a little bit vibey. And there's a few small criticisms I've got on this bike, not much. I, I'm, I've had to struggle to think of some negatives about this because, like I say, it has really surprised me. But one of the things that you could point out as a negative is that engine is a little bit vibey, sort of below 2,500 revs. You know, there's a lot of vibrations. The mirrors are as good as useless. You can just about make out what's behind you, but there's a lot of vibration in them. They're quite far in as well because I've got big shoulders I can really only barely see behind me so the mirrors are not very good oh the sound of it one of the great things about this engine it may be a little bit vibey it may be a little bit sort of rattly at the bottom but the sound the Diavel was a bit disappointing the sound on that this sounds glorious it sounds like the uh, very much like the V2 Panigale, I suppose. It's got a lovely howl, and what is really nice about it is the overrun. If you let the bike go right down to sort of 2,000 revs, it pops. Listen. Helmet open. Let's do that again. Listen to this. <laughs> it's got a lovely little pop, bang and crackle on the overrun at low revs. Gorgeous. That suspension is so impressive on this bike. I think that is the most impressive thing actually. Just how the bump management is just beautiful. It feels so plush, so plush for the road. Like I say, I've never felt Olin's which feels as plush as this. Beautiful for the road, because this is a road bike, so they've got it set in road spec. Brakes are also excellent. Oh, lovely twin monoblock Brembo calipers. You know, they're not Stylemas, they're not absolutely top spec, but they've got a lovely feel, lovely, very progressive, lots of power, lots of bite. Really nice Brembo levers, both clutch and brake, you know, a Brembo, uh, clutch slave lever as well, really nice black levers. Top quality, top quality componentry on this bike. Okay, we know it's got to be done. My favourite little hill climb. Let's see how the Super Sport handles this. A little bit damp. It's just lovely to throw around. 
keep it bubbling. I mean, it's 110 horsepower. You've got to really use the revs on this bike to get the most out of it. And I love that. As I say, I love middleweights for that very reason. You can rev them. You can work the engine without being at prison speeds. A lot to be said for middleweights. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, what more do you want than that? Really? For a road bike, you don't need it any sharper than that. It really handles well. It lays down. It's really stable. And you've still got a nice, comfortable upright riding position. Unbelievable. Quick shift and blipper is also very, very good. cars out of the way what I love about middleweights I know I keep coming back to this middleweight subject I think I'm gonna have to get myself a middleweight because I really enjoy riding middleweights you work in that gearbox work in that engine you know you're up through the gears first second third fourth you look down you're doing like 80 90 miles an hour you're not doing 80 90 miles an hour in first gear it's much more engaging barrel it into the corner again You know, it's sporty enough that you can move around on the seat. You can lock your legs into the tank, which I really like. You know, so you've got, you've got the good things from a sports bike, the good engaging elements of riding a sports bike, moving around to that seat, hanging your knee out. You know, those sorts of things, which you may not do on a sort of a much more upright, naked -y bike, just watching these patches of dampness on these corners. These Super, these Diablo 3s are very good, but I don't want to put them to the limits. Whee, front brake, that's a lot of front brake. Not a problem for this. Quick shifter and blipper is standard on the S, let's give it a blip. Really good, really good blipper, quick shifter. Quick shifter is especially good at the lower RPM stuff which is normally where quick shifters on twins suffer. When you're doing the quick shifter a bit further up the rev range, it's not quite as good as it is at the lower rev range, but it's still very good. It's still very good. I think, you know, twins, V-twins, oh, twins. They're a bit more difficult to get a really smooth quick shifter action on. So how much does this cost? Well, this is the S version, as I mentioned. So this has got the full Olins front and, front and rear. So of course the price of this one is uh, is a bit more. This is a, just a smidge over 14,000. So for a, a Ducati fully equipped with Olins and S model, 14,000 is not too bad. It's obviously a lot more than the RS660, but the RS660 is you know, got nowhere near the fit and finish of this and the componentry that this has got. So it's not really comparable. Listen, bubbles. I don't think that'll come out on the camera, but it sounds very, very nice, this. For a standard exhaust, it's got a lovely noise to it. Really, really nice. <laughs> Two fat dogs. Oh, they're not talking about the staff. Listen to my Ducati, everybody. Is that Philip Schofield? Listen to Mr. Burbleton, everybody. Listen, it's a Ducati. Look, listen to that. Yeah, he likes it. He loves it. Anyone else? Oh, look, it's a bubbling Ducati, everybody. Yes, yes, he likes it. He loves it as well. Listen, listen, listen to that burbling. Listen. Oh, you like over here. Listen to this. Yeah, you like it, don't you? <laughs> oh, dear, such a child. The engine is a little bit clattery sounding, can be. Listen. It's fine, but they, they can send, sound a little bit clattery, these. Um, it could be the valves, that could be something to do with the desmodromic valves, perhaps. But they all sound like that. You haven't got to worry. Around town, it is a beautifully fueled... I just leave the bike in sports mode, sport mode, the whole time. There's no need to come out of sport mode. It's perfect in town, it's perfect out of faster roads, it's perfect on the back roads. 
and that is a sign I think that the, the bike is really well set up when you can just leave it in sport mode the whole time and not have to touch it because you don't really want to have to go through and adjust your throttle response all the time it's just a pain isn't it you really just want to leave it alone so what you really want is just a very nicely set up sports mode and that's exactly what this has got it gets the looks it does get the looks this thing from people especially in this white paint job i think what we do let me pull over in a second and we'll just go through some of the details it's all about the details so there she is the ducati super sport in this glorious matte white color I uh, can't think what they call it actually, it's matte, matte, silk, white or something. It looks absolutely glorious and close up, I don't know if it's going to come out on the camera, but uh, it's got a lovely pearlescent look to it. If you get the sun on it, can we see a bit of sunshine? Beautiful finish. First of all, the fantastic Olin suspension, the highlight of the bike. Fantastic how they've got those set up for a road bike, absolutely brilliant. I think the best road performance Olin suspension I've ever tried. That is the rear shot. One thing, slight criticism, is it's really rather hard to get to this adjuster that's sort of recessed within the mudguard area there. It's, I can just about turn it one click, my fingers. I can't turn it back again. New for this year is the styling. The styling is one of the big changes for 2021. And it's now got those Panigale esque headlights basically while well, they're running the drls with the headlights underneath i really like these little like shark fin design where the i guess it's where the air scoops are down the inside there look it's uh, it's a it's a beautifully designed machine the front screen does go up and down as i tried to demonstrate while i was riding along and failed you've got to give it a bit of a tug it's quite hard to do while you're traveling but that raises the screen up a little bit it's still not massively high, but it's a little bit better. And if you're going to be going on the motorway or something, leave it up. And it actually looks reasonable with it up, but lift it forward towards you and push down. And that takes it up and down. From the back of the bike, you can see it's obviously got a single sided swinging arm. Very nice. And these are sort of low pipes. The exhaust doesn't look the best exhaust I've ever seen again, but it's all right. It sounds decent. You can hopefully just change those end cans parts of it and you might better just make it look a little bit better. But it's, um, I think you agree, this new styling, it's now actually a very, very nice looking bike. What I do like is there's no fasteners for the belly pan. The fasteners are actually sort of on the inside. So it gives it a very clean look to the way the belly pan attaches to the bike. It probably makes it an absolute pig to get it off but it, it certainly gives it a clean look. One of the best things about the bike is this blooming seat. Bloody lovely it is. Cossets your bottom, this thing. It's a very, very comfortable seat. I think it's the most comfortable seat on any mm -hmm. Ducati I've ever tried. Actually, the one on the Street Fighter is actually pretty good as well, but this is as good as the one on the Street Fighter and there's a bit more room to it as well, so you can move around in it a little bit more. It's a fine looking steed with some lovely details. I think you agree. Let's jump back on. Does funny things to you, that burbling. Practical things, apart from the mirrors, which aren't very good. I think I mentioned that. Fuel consumption is pretty good. The only slight downside is it's only got a 16 litre fuel tank. So I've been getting about 120, 130 miles per tank. You won't get any more than that. If, you, if you're riding it hard, you'll get about 110 miles out of a tank. So final thoughts on the little Super Sport. As I say, this bike really took me by surprise. Much, much, much better than I anticipated it would be. And I actually love the little thing. It's fantastic. As an all round road bike to do a bit of everything on, potentially even a little bit of touring on, absolutely spot on, absolutely spot on. It's, um, it's impressed me. Would I spend extra for the S model? Yeah, I probably would because this Olin's is worth it. This Olin's is worth it on this bike. I need to really try the stock version, but I can tell you the Olin's one is beautiful. It's not, certainly not a waste of money to spend extra on the gold bling. It's not, you're not just gonna find the benefits on the track. That's the thing. This 
Olin's on this bike is so plush on the road over the potholes and it's brilliant when you do want to push on and put a bit of a uh, bit of knee out and a bit of a bit of enthusiastic riding it's really really good it's not wasted money just for looks could you do a track day on this yeah you could take this on track it's it, you know it's, it's not going to be super quick on track on track it's not designed really for track but if you had to a push you could take it and you could have a lot of fun as i say i, I did ride this um california superbike school have a couple of these on their fleet to learn on because it's a nice comfortable way of learning to ride on track but it's a little bit you know it's not a panigale v2 when it comes to being on track if you want to do track days get yourself the panigale would be my advice but there we go guys thanks so much for watching as always really appreciated hope you've enjoyed that and i will see you soon on the next video cheers guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this.